Let's go. That's three containers. Each one is eight feet long, so it's 24 by 40. As you can see in the 3D model I created, the container home is supported by 16 cylindrical concrete columns, four rows by four rows. And so that's what you see here, setting up batter boards. They're basically pieces of wood set up a few feet beyond the footprint of the foundation. And then you attach strings to the wood at pre-measured points. And the strings provide visual and measurement accurate reference points for digging foundation holes and more. Here I am putting the last few strings in place. And as you can see, I, I love this shot here at the end of all the strings lining up in a nice level plane. Check them out guys, half a day of digging, four of these suckers done. That being said, the elevation of the ground was lower here, so we didn't have to dig as deep. Uh, probably about an hour of sunlight left. Um, so I'm gonna see if I can knock out a couple more of these, probably just one more. And uh, that'll be, after that, it'll be 11 to go, 11 left. So a few months ago I announced on my channel that I'm offering services where I turn your shipping container home idea into a custom 3D model. Since then I've been hired by over 30 viewers of this channel to bring their container homes to life in fully explorable 3D. My services include the final 3D model, various image drawings of the house with dimension measurements, and I can even create highly realistic images and video tours of the home if you really want to show up. So if you have a container home idea that you'd like to see brought to life in a fully explorable custom 3D model, feel free to email me using my email which I have listed down in the description of this video to learn more. So I've gotten some comments over the months uh, from people asking about what about the cost of the labor that I had to put into this house build. You know, one thing I will say is that as you watch this video unfold and you see all this, all this you know, manual labor that I put into the house, all the grinding, the welding, the cutting the holes out for windows, etc., all this stuff that, that you're gonna see here, it actually isn't showing you the other 50% of the work, which was researching and planning. Um, which I did pretty much entirely by myself, you know, they say knowing is half the battle. Well, easily half of the hours of work that I put into building this container home, without a doubt, was in the researching and planning, which there really isn't footage of that because it, shows, it was just me in that temporary RV I was living in, um, just on my laptop, Googling things, YouTubing videos, watching, alert. it took me about three weeks of research to uh, learn to, to to be ready to make the purchase for all the welding equipment that I needed. Um, when you see a video like this and you see the sort of the physical execution and actual construction, well, there is also the behind the scenes researching and planning um, that I did for for many many hours. The next step is to cut the sono tubes to the right lengths. This is actually a lot easier said than done. The main challenge is how do you cut a perfectly straight line? around a cylinder. 
We eventually found a unique method where you cut a small piece off the factory edge of one of the tubes, cut the circle open, cut a few slits through, and insert a hose clamp. Yeah, just like that. What you're left with is a size adjustable factory straight line edge ring to use as a physical guide as you cut your straight line around the tubes. Per my structural engineer's plans, each tube would have to be cut to a length of 46 inches. This here was a tough one. Here I am lifting one of the Sano tubes up into place by myself. They weren't too heavy, but getting a good stance was a big, bit awkward uh, given all the holes in the ground and the rebar everywhere. It's gonna go anywhere other than up.
as I've built the actual house, I've continued adding to and developing the 3D model. The model actually provides me incredible assistance as I can plan every aspect of the home in advance and figure out what parts and pieces work for framing, electrical, plumbing, etc. This includes the many decisions I had to make about framing, like how to frame the corners of a container home where the double top plate should overlap but can't because of that big corner cube containers have. And other things like how to install windows in a container, which as you can see in the 3D model, there were multiple layers to the final system I ended up using. This new updated 3D model is available to download and explore right now. Just click the link in the description below to learn more. Try it now. Just like that. You know, it went in pretty well, but obviously here it's still elevated. A little smack won't fix. Now we're looking a lot better here. Don't think that's going anywhere. Today I am going to be working on treating the rust on the shipping containers. The containers aren't even on the foundation, so you might be like, why are you why are you worrying about you know getting rid of some rust when you haven't even put the containers on the foundation yet? Well, because there's three containers and they're gonna go all three of them squashed together right next to each other, that means that some of these walls of the container are gonna be forever sealed. <laughs> like a tomb, sealed forever. Rain day is finally over. The building blocks of my home are in their final resting place. A long journey still awaits. It's not a home yet. It's time to cut the walls out from the interior, the interior walls of the shipping container home. There's cut number one. This whole wall is gonna get taken out. Now the next cut is 118 inches.
the walls have now been removed. It's uh, definitely a big step. What, what I'm working with here, so. And those gaps up there is what we're moving on to next. I gotta seal them. In the meantime, I'm gonna start working on the back of rod. Now these are pretty big gaps as you can see. They actually measure about just under an inch and it actually gets a little thinner as you go over there. The reason for that is that there are some slight inconsistencies in the container. Sometimes they're a little crooked or bent. There's technically always a gap between containers because as you can see, the corner fittings, these cubes on the corners, they, uh, they stick out a little more than the top rail here. So there's always gonna be a gap. We finished caulking the gaps. That's layer one of the defense of, from water leaks and penetration on the roof. <clears throat> the next step though now is to cut long metal strips that go on top of the caulking seal. And I'm gonna get those long metal strips from some of the walls, the container walls we cut out. Now, today, we are gonna be finally welding these strips that I cut out from the walls as plates over the gap. So the, the caulk is pretty much dried, as far as I can tell. And now, we're gonna put this over, we're gonna be welding it into place. Now today, covering the holes in the corner fittings of the containers. Now, if you take a look up there at the corners, there's those cubes. If you look inside of here where the two containers meet, water can also potentially leak into the house. So the idea was, aside from caulking it up in there as a bit of a preventative measure, I figured, let me not let water pull in here at all. And even though it looks like it can easily flow out, it just doesn't seem like a good idea. So what I figured was cover these holes up.
Look what has arrived. A new 20 foot container has just arrived. Eventually it's just gonna be like a storage shed. So it'll be in the back somewhere behind the home. But for now I have it up here up front near the road, near the front of the property. Cause it's gonna be like a temporary loading, loading bay. Got a bunch of lumber coming in for the internal framing of the house. And so when that arrives, I figured it'd be, this would be a great place to temporarily store the lumber. Sleep. I was literally asleep and I just hear a truck outside wake me up. The lumber is here, folks. This new updated 3D model is available to download and explore right now. Just click the link in the description below to learn more. So we've arrived to another very, very big and important day. Today is window, outline, trace, drawing, and eventual cutting out the windows. How do you cut windows out in a shipping container? Well, you take your angle grinder and you cut the hole. But don't, what, don't you wish it was that easy to just chop a hole out? Nope. We have to be extremely precise. As you can see, 53 and 7 8 inch width, 39 and 1 8 inch height. Okay, and so again, with the bottom line marked, now I gotta mark the top line I've already begun. All right, we've got the laser level now sitting on its back, providing us with a vertical, vertical line mark.
Yes! Yes! Right. Woo! <laughs> oh, look at that guillotine. Oh my God, four more to go. It's gonna look amazing with these windows already. Still kind of looks like that's just a rusty old box, but it's coming together real quick. Okay, here we are guys. All five windows cut out, as you're already well aware. But when you cut out a window, you gotta reinforce it. Here we have our angle iron. These are two by two by eighth inch thick angle iron. No, it's not final and it hasn't been welded into place, but kind of just stuffed it in there. Oh, see, that looks perfect, man. Wow. That is perfect infection, bro. A little bit of an offset there, but it's exactly the way it's supposed to be. All right, everybody, so it's an interesting time right now. Uh, all the lumber's already here. I can start framing already, technically. But I think it'd be wise, the windows and doors haven't arrived yet. I think it would be wise to go ahead and just start welding the angle irons to the cutouts.
Okay, so I got this window uh, clamped up now with the small pieces of angle iron. That's an example of what it looks like. Just goes in right up into that nook, the L shape of the angle iron, fixed perfect. Give it a little bit of a clamp and uh, I'll have no problem welding right here and right there. No problem at all. Of course, I have it all the way around. I got that L, L piece right there. Got that one right there. Cut it up here on the sides here. Okay, just finished welding this window. Let's take a look. Still haven't cleaned these up, so they're still covered in splatter. Yeah, these things, they ain't moving anytime soon. All right, so I've been out here for, I don't know, three and a half hours or so. Slowly making progress on my first wall framing of my whole life. So three and a half hours seems like so too long for, your, for, for, uh, for framing a wall. Well, there you have it. First wall ever, you know, getting the hang of it. All right, next section is in place. Piece number one, and then piece number two starts here, where you see the bottom plate uh, end and start. It's a very interesting situation because the top plate on this one stops right where this one, the, the window starts. So I had to get the measurements perfect. Almost the entire 40 foot span of wall uh, framed man. I would love to be completely done framing by the end of April um, If not way sooner, so I'm, I'm gonna see if I can go on a spree every day frame 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 <sighs> two days and Obviously there's a learning curve. So the first day took the longest So more framing these joists here attached to joist hangers um, you got your bottom plate this is uh interesting here this is a uh, a hold down it has a bolt right there it's nutted on screwed into this corner post and then that bolt there goes straight down through the floor of the shipping container and it's embedded into the concrete column itself with an epoxy um glue adhesive I guess you can call it um, all right let's uh let's knock this thing out
As I've built the actual house, I've continued adding to and developing the 3D model. The model actually provides me incredible assistance as I can plan every aspect of the home in advance and figure out what parts and pieces work for framing, electrical, plumbing, etc. This includes the many decisions I had to make about framing, like how to frame the corners of a container home where the double top plate should overlap but can't because of that big corner cube containers have. other things like how to install windows in a container, which as you can see in the 3D model, there were multiple layers to the final system I ended up using. This new updated 3D model is available to download and explore right now. Just click the link in the description below to learn more. All right, everybody, so welcome back to another update video. Today I'm going to be doing a plumbing tour for this shipping container home. Um, come around here. This is the main exit to the septic tank. So as you can see, here's a little better idea. I spent weeks planning, researching, compiling all the things I needed to buy, putting the order in through Home Depot so it could be delivered here. Execution, I basically spent seven days straight flopping around in the sand. <laughs> installing the plumbing uh, but I'm I'm impressed with what I did because I was basically by myself the whole time did it all and there there was really very few hiccups I had a few issues a few things that kind of screwed up that needed to go back and kind of rework but again nothing significant nothing crazy but first let's start on the outside and let me show you guys in more detail what is going on here so here we have uh, sort of the end of the line so to speak this is right underneath the kitchen sink. We have a clean out plug and adapter at, at the end. Clean out plug and adapter at the end. That's the end of the line. This is the kitchen sink. As you can see, the drain for the kitchen sink runs out the bottom of the floor. We got a 90 degree elbow, a little bit of extra pipe. Here we have a 45 degree street elbow right here. That 45 connects to a, uh, a Y, and this Y is a 3 inch by 1 and a half, if I'm not mistaken, inch. So it's a 3, a 3, and a 1 and a half. We continue our main line, comes through. We have galvanized straps that kind of double loop in a sense, and there are screws through the bottom of these beams underneath the shipping container, these steel beams, these screws right into it, and that ain't going nowhere. So we continue. We follow the main line. We continue. We continue to the next eventful moment here. This here is actually a... This is actually the drain for the laundry. This is the drain for the laundry, believe it or not. But if you follow it up, as you'll see when I go inside the house, it's also the vent for multiple fixtures. The clothes washer drains down. And again, we have a sort of similar setup here where we have a, a 90 degree. This is a two inch now. This is a two inch pipe uh, because it's a vent pipe as well. So this two inch 90, we got a small piece of PVC in the middle to connect with this 45 degree street, 45 degree two inch street bend, which now connects to this Y here. This is a three by three by two inch Y. And then of course that now continues down the main line, continues. We got another galvanized strap, continues over here. And again, this is the sort of end of the line. 
the, the, the we just followed that all the way back there. Coming, 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 coming. Here, the septic guy is going to continue it. One of the, the guy who's installing the septic system, he's going to do that. He's going to continue the three inch into the septic system somewhere in this vicinity. But that's not the end of the plumbing. Because as you can see, we have a connection here. Let's pull back for a second so you can see the whole thing. So I'm going to do something here real quick. I'm going to go ahead and open these doors. And it didn't, it just occurred to me right now. This will give you a lot better sense of what the hell's going on plumbing wise. Yeah, why didn't I think of this? The two inch vent out the roof comes down. And then acts as a connection over here. This is actually a drain line for the bathroom sink, which is over here, actually hidden behind the green door. Shower, toilet, bathroom sink. So the bathroom sink, the water drains, it comes this way. Boom, this is acting as a vent for the bathroom drain. It comes down, sweeps in, and comes out. To your left here, we have the toilet, comes down, sweeps in. And over here, as you see, that's the bathtub. That's the uh, plumbing for the bathtub. That little part sticks up. And of course, the bathroom comes down. The, the drains over here. It connects to this because this stack is acting as a vent for the bath, uh, the, the shower as well. That's why it came this way and connected down there with a sanitary tee. And then comes down. So again, let's, let's look at this a little closer here. So again, there's your bathtub slash shower plumbing fixture. The water comes down the bathtub drain. It comes this way. It comes down. It comes down through here. It hits the P-trap. Comes. Flies its way over here. To the sanitary tee, which again is connected actually to the two-inch uh, vent. And then it comes down and it drains out. So that definitely helps uh, il illustrate what I'm trying to talk about. I'll show you the inside. So this is the plumbing from the inside of the house. So here's the kitchen. Kitchen window, kitchen sink. We're going to get into the supply lines in just a moment. Let's focus on the sanitary for now. So the kitchen sinks about here. The water comes down the drain comes through here, goes down, and then out to the septic system. But it also branches up here, and this acts as a vent for the kitchen sink. And what's it doing, everybody? What's it going to do? It's going to connect to this two-inch vent slash drain. It goes up through the roof. Two-inch, two-inch by one-and-a-half-inch sanitary tee. No water is coming through this pipe. This is purely a vent. This, however, there is water going through this pipe. This is the drainage pipe for the laundry. Remember I mentioned laundry earlier? That's what connects. So this is actually, this, this vertical is acting as a vent for the kitchen sink. And it's acting as a vent and acting as a drain, essentially for the drain pipe that's going from the laundry. So let's go take a look at the clothes washer. The clothes washer, probably a little bit unconventional, is inside of the main bedroom in this house, along with the dryer. Um, it, it, I probably could have reworked a few things and maybe created a small utility closet somewhere where I could have fit these, but I, I just felt so rushed back in April 2019. I just wanted to get this thing going that Maybe I could have tweaked a couple things. But again, this is the laundry. Clothes washer, dryer going to be in here. We have the typical setup for a clothes washer. Uh, it's got hot water. It's got cold water supply. That will connect with a steel braided hose, I believe, to the clothes washer. But let's again, let's focus on the drainage first. The water from the clothes washer is in here. comes down. P traps, and yes, this is sloped. Believe it or not, I sloped this around the corner. It comes through. It 90s right there. Flips around, continues. We're on the other side of where we were a moment ago, and then it drains down. Drains down. 
And again, earlier I mentioned the bathroom sink. This is it. Remember? Shower, toilet, bathroom sink. And uh, what this is essentially is, this is uh, a few pieces here went into this. A lot of research it took me. This is a, called a trap adapter. So oftentimes under a sink, you've got that whole kind of P-trap assembly. Well, that P-trap comes here. It connects through here. This screws on and creates a watertight seal. It's called a, this piece right here, from here to here, is called a trap adapter. Trap adapter. There, to connect the trap adapter to this 90 degree elbow, there's a small piece of PVC in here. Small piece of PVC about that wide to create a connection point. This 90 degree elbow now comes through here, through the wall, and both drains out of there and vents out of here. All right, water supply, water supply, water supply. Where do we begin? Well, we begin at the well. The water is through a submersible well pump, is pumped up through the well, 80 feet deep. It comes through this PVC underground. Underground, it comes inside. It goes inside of the well pump house over here. Right here, we have a water supply line that comes out. One inch PVC water comes out underground. It comes about this direction. Obviously, there's the container home. And it starts heading to the shipping container home. This is the idea I came up with in the designing phase. The water supply comes underground. 90 degree elbows up. Now this is PEX. This is three quarter inch PEX. This is a three quarter inch PEX. And what do we got? We got some clamps and it runs all the way. Over. This is a water supply line. So the water is going through a three quarter inch PEX all the way over there. Main water, the, the main three quarter inch water supply, it's coming from where we were just at all the way over there, comes this way comes through here and again this is all part of the system I designed and I think ultimately it it was a good approach the main water supply for the house enters in two locations one here this is a three-way shark bite three quarter three quarter three quarter the water's coming from the pump from the well pump comes through here three quarter inch pecs it now comes up here and enters the house for the first time. Water enters the house for the first time. But it also continues down that way and it enters the house for a second time. Now, what is going on here? Well, let me show you. The first time the water supply enters the house, this is what happens. There it is. Behold. So get your nice orthographic. You can see it's going straight up straight up into that and what is this this is a multi t port i believe that's the name or a multi port t but i think it's a multi t port this is actually made by shark bite it's made by shark bite and what it is is it allows your main three quarter inch water supply to enter the home and then branch off to supply water to three fixtures this is a three quarter inch push to connect shark bite. These are half inch push to connect shark bite. It's three quarter main line in, and then it, so it downsizes to half inch, half inch, half inch. And then here you have your blue half inch water supply lines for your various fixtures. So before we go into the house and I show you that in more detail, let's continue the journey for the main water supply line. Remember, it's coming from the well over there. It comes in three-way, one into the house, keeps going, and we follow it. And where does it go? It comes in right there. And let's take a look at where our three-quarter inch supply line branched off to our half inches. Let's take a look here. So now we're on the inside of you. The three-quarter inch comes up, three-quarter, multi t port half inch half inch half inch we have various things that need to be supplied in this bathroom this three this three way was perfect for my needs because the bathroom needed three supplies a cold water supply for the shower 
and that's what this is. You can see it just runs and connects into this shower fixture here. And then we have another branch off. So this, the next one is for the toilet cold water supply. You follow this, you follow this, and then here we have our toilet. This is our toilet cold water supply line. Toilets only need cold water, so you don't need, you don't need to run a, a hot one. And then lastly, we have the last one. This one runs up, comes through here, and supplies the cold water for the bathroom sink. Don't worry, we're going to get into that red hot later. So, give you an idea. So when I found out that Sharkbite had these, I was like, holy crap, that's exactly what I'm looking for while I was planning this. So, that's that. Now, remember we had this other one here. Remember that there was the other three quarter inch supply line. So you can see the white, a little bit of white there. Three quarter inch comes up into a multi T port. And again, three, three fixtures, three supply lines, half inch, half inch, half inch. Well, let's go ahead and follow the first one on the bottom. Comes up, come rises up here, comes around here, through there. Now what is going on here? Well, this is a cold water for the tankless water heater. So there's going to be a tankless water heater right here. That cold supply is going to come in. It's going to come in through here. We have a 90 degree shark bite drop ear elbow. It comes in. It turns out. You can ignore this for now. This was a temporary thing. So again, the three quarter inch comes. We have our stub out here. And then this here stubs out, we'll probably shorten it in the end, but this stubs out, this connects to the cold side of the tankless water heater. So it comes in on the right side of the tankless, it comes into the tankless water heater, it does its thing, and then it comes out the other side, connecting to this red hot water half inch PEX. So everything that's on the left side of this is coming out of the tankless as hot. So what does it do? Well, it comes out of the tankless water heater. It comes through this, it's another 90 degree, half inch by half inch shark bite. Again, same thing here, half inch by half inch. The hot water comes in, it comes up, and then I hit a little bit of a roadblock here. Because as you can see, we have this another wonderful multi-T port. Look at the beauty on that. It turns out I only needed four hot water supply lines. This is the most they had, I think. I think they only had a four. They might have had one with more, actually. I don't remember. But that wasn't my issue. But this was perfect for me because it's, 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 it's half inch, half inch, half inch, half inch for my hot waters. But the problem is that they didn't sell. I could not find any of these multi-T ports where this was half inch. They're, every single one I ever found was three quarter on the bottom. And then you have your downsize half inch. Well, that was a problem because the three quarter inch, that's, that's outside. That's the main water supply line. The water that's feeding the heater is coming from a half inch and then half inch comes out the other side. So I had to do something a little bit, maybe slightly unusual, but I, I, I looked it up. I don't think this is going to affect water pressure in a negative way. Your half inch hot water comes through here. It comes up and then what I had to do was I had to put a small piece of three quarter. As you can see, you recognize the white, a small piece of three quarter inch PEX. So what I did was, is I found a three quarter inch to half inch shark bite push to connect adapter. So the half inch hot comes in, the half inch hot comes up, connects to the half inch here, becomes a three quarter, allowing me to put a three quarter inch piece of PEX here which then allows me to adapt to the three quarter multi T. That was a bit of a hiccup. I wasn't sure if I could do that coming from half inch to three quarter, then to come back to half inch. I researched it. I didn't find anything that suggested that that would create some kind of an issue with water pressure. So it comes up and then now we work. Now, as you can see, four hot water supply lines, four hot water supply lines. Where are they going? Where are they going? Okay, well, let's start with the first one. Our first hot water actually loops back. 
So this the hot water supply line comes down, it loops back and supplies the hot water for our for our clothes washer, for the clothes washer. The next hot water supply line, if you follow it, comes up through here, comes up all the way up and actually goes over the roof rafters because there's that gap up there. It's very convenient. I didn't have to drill holes through the rafters. I can just go over the roof rafters, over the roof rafters and comes down and supplies the hot water for our bathroom sink. And how are these attaching? Well, pretty simply, you have another familiar half inch by half inch shark bite push to connect drop ear elbow that those, these come with these little things little tabs for screwing and it just pops out here and eventually will connect to the hot water supply line so that's that one we covered the first one we covered the second one the next one comes up loops up crosses over the i-beam and we follow it and it actually supplies the hot water for the shower. So it comes down, it runs, it runs, it runs. It comes in on the left side of here. Cold water on the right, hot on the left. It comes in, goes through here. Now it's in the system. And then it can go either up to here. We have, again, I showed you that earlier as our shower head, or it comes out the bottom of this, comes out the bottom and bathtub spout. And of course, the last of the four hot water supply lines comes up, goes over, heads that way. And where does it go? It goes down and it goes to our kitchen hot water supply. Kitchen hot water supply now there's still a few more of these colds we got to cover we follow the other one the other cold it comes up here here half inch by half inch by half inch three-way shark by branches up comes up here and actually supplies the water line for the kitchen for the for the, the refrigerator in the kitchen that's going to be the supply of water line. But it continues, it continues, it continues. It comes over here and, of course, supplies the cold water for the clothes washer. So let's go take a look at the kitchen real quick. You know, one thing I will say about this build and the way that the plumbing turned out was that this was very... It, it was much simpler than other houses where you might have a bathroom on one side of the house and a bathroom over there and a bathroom on the second floor. Basically, all the water supply for this house, plumbing and water supply, all of it was basically in that corner of the house. Uh, it's, it's all there. It's all in the corner of the house. All of it. So it, it helped kind of simplify at least how much maneuvering and navigating I would have had to have taken some of this plumbing. Um, still a challenge, still required a lot of work, but at least it was all kind of centered in this corner here. Everything was centered in this corner. Made it a little bit simpler for a first timer like me.